Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Oh, what was that? Oh, ladies and gentlemen, I can actually speak. Welcome back to Monkey Apocalypse. I don't know the number. Trex, what is it? It is 28. 28. There we go. It's 28. Okay, so we got your books for the week. I'm Stevie B. Uh, this is Trex, like I just said. Nerds of the Apocalypse. Jeff from Punk Monkey Comics, 4711 Forest Drive. Could not. <laughs> That's like his name now, Jeff, 4711 Forest Drive. Could not, could not be here today, but we miss him. And we'll, we'll go over the books anyway because we, we don't care if he's not here. <laughs> that is what we do. That's what we do. Uh, so we're going to go on with the books. Um, I'll mention the Graphic Novel Club. We actually, uh, they're so, they do it every month. So we're just going to mention it and then post the link to it. We did a separate video. So check the show notes of this video. Yeah, just we'll check it down in the link below for the Graphic Novel Club. Uh, and learn all about it, the date, what books they are. And if it's if the date is passed, just wait and we'll have the next one posted fairly soon. Yep. So, uh, what will we go? On to... Let's go to the books. Books. Go to the books. Books. We, books. All right, guys. We're going to go into the books and we're going to go into the Notable Mentions. Still love that name. So, yeah. who, who came up with that? I think it was a combination of you and Jeff. You know? I, actually, I don't even think I was here that day. But I'll take it. I came up with it. Go. Wow. <laughs> All right. Our first notable is going to be Original Sin trade paperback, Thor and Loki, The Tenth Realm. So if you don't remember from the Original Sin tie-ins, really, uh, Original Sin brought out a whole bunch of truths, everyone's darkest, deepest sin. And apparently we found out that in the realm of Asgard, there is a Tenth Realm and apparently that's where Angelo is from, I believe. I'm not sure. This I'm not sure either. I can't remember. Well, try, well, we read this and find out. But this is uh, essentially the only good tie-ins to Original Sin. Oh, <laughs> no. Check it out, though. It's good. Tenth Realm. That's right. So we we find out uh, this is actually is where Angela comes from. So pick up the trade paperback of Original Sin. Literally, it was actually the only good tie-in from that series. Yep. The only one. So our next notable is Spawn number 248. Wow, 248. That's a lot of spawns. That, <laughs> yeah, that's what you did yeah. there. Yeah. So uh, if you don't really remember who Spawn was, he had a really bad 90s movie. He was burnt. He was burnt in that movie, yes. He got burnt. Uh, Spawn is actually one of the, honestly, one of the best Mc, uh, Seth MacFarlane. I used to I used to think that I was so bad because I used to stay up and watch the HBO cartoon. Right. And I was like, I know I should be watching this. Little CV was like, <laughs> I'm sneaking it. And, and then I got really, really afraid of uh, the clown. What's his name? I don't know his name. But clown. He used to freak me out. And then I had nightmares. <laughs> but yeah. That's where sc clowns are scary. Right. So number 248. The reason we're bringing this up, it actually came out last week, but we're wanting to bring it up because issue number 250 is coming in December, or, yeah, at the beginning of December, and it's a, it, honestly, it is a milestone for Spawn and also for McFarlane as well because he's coming back. A lot of other classic artists and writers for Spawn are coming back for this big, gigantic 250 issue. So, uh, not really sure what. I don't know the story of Spawn, what's going on to, into the recent story right now. Uh, but of course, there's a new. There is a new spawn. It's not the same character because it's getting a little been, like awkward, wouldn't it? But uh, it's a new guy. Apparently, he found out some truths, and he's going on a little spree. And one of his best friends has to try and stop him. It's weird that you would you you create spawn, and then a few years later, you make Peter Griffin. Like that's it's not the same guy. You sure? I am positive. It's it is not the same guy. I thought that oh, first oh, when mom. Family Guy first came out. It's not the same. No, he's no, no. Seth I'm just kidding. Where <laughs> am I? <laughs> so, uh, pick up uh, Spawn two forty eight. Prepare for this special two fifty number two fifty issue coming in a couple of weeks. So now we are in the top five picks of the week, and coming in at number five is coming is a number one from Dynamite Vertigo. It's called Django. Jango. Zorro. How does that song, how does that song go? Really awkwardly like? Yeah, I don't remember. I don't but remember. Django and Zorro, bro. Like, that's cool. It's just like, whatever, let's do it, dude. Let's <laughs> put them together. They're both from the same time, right? Kind of. So, I and, so this story is actually being written by Quentin Tarantino. Oh, that's even So, better. And this is actually set a few years after the events from Django Unchained. So... so there's going to be like 20 pages 
of tense dialogue and then one page of like everybody killing each other, right? Spoilers. Sorry. <laughs> uh, so this is set uh, years after the movie. Uh, of course, Django and, Brun- and Brunhilde are actually wanted. Of course. They're wanted in, uh, in the East for what they've done, so they actually moved out West. They are now living... Uh, Brunhilde is set up in Chicago, and Django's doing the bounty hunter thing. He's still going out to collect bounties. But he meets himself a very aged and sophisticated gentleman who hires Django to be a bodyguard. That's right. Zorro hired him to be his bodyguard. If I and so right now, I'd cut your shirt with this. This is a good shirt. I'm sorry. Kind of wrinkly, but sorry. So, this is uh and of course Zorro has to be Zorro and he's going out to help this village and Django gets wrapped up into it. So, we have this great st- this I want to see how this buddy team up works with Django and Zorro. This this should be pretty good. This would be interesting. You know, uh, Quentin Tarantino would be like, oh, check out his Wild West movie. And he's just like, listen, none of this movie takes place in the West. None of it. Now, this does, though. Mid-East. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Midwest a little bit. I mean, we don't know how far. But uh, this is coming from Dynamite and, Ver- Dynamite and Vertigo. This is a new number one from them. So definitely check this out. All right, coming at number four. Trex, is it inappropriate to call... This character, and, and I'm not saying I use this. I'm I, I'm asking for permission. Is it okay to call? I have him, to bleep this? No. Is it okay to call him Black Cap? Is that is that appropriate? <laughs> like, because you know it's like one syllable with A's. Like, is I don't want to be like, yo, you check out that Black Cap number one. <laughs> is that inappropriate? Well, you uh, use your gangster voice, yeah. Oh, Black Cap, like, I don't, <laughs> stop it. <I'm> sorry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Wow. Is that, no, so not, not inappropriate or no? Oh, Rin- oh, inappropriate if I use my gangster voice. So if you use my white voice, did you guys check out Black Cap? Like, that's cool? No, nope. huh? this it apparently doesn't work still. Uh, still not cool. So, so not. So the new Captain America, number one, that's what you have to call him. We're, we'll be listening. Yeah. New, <laughs> all new Captain America, number one. That's right. This is the first issue that we have. Sam Wilson, a.k.a. the Falcon, taking the, uh, man- taking the mantle as the new Captain America. This is his first issue, going into his first fight. We've seen him in Axis. We've seen him in other stuff. We even saw him, you know, kind of pass the torch. But this is his first standalone book. That's right. So Hydra's growing up. The terrorist brand have infiltrated the Marvel Universe completely. Ooh. But what is their ultimate goal? And him and Nomad are going to find out. Black Cap and Nomad. I mean, gosh, all new Cap and Nomad. Coming at you, and we're we're kind of we're. we're combi- you can send all hate mail Sorry, to no, at no, Stevie B. No, <laughs> no I, look, come on, man. Like, like no, <laughs> only half of me. Oh, that's right. Sorry. Uh, so we're kind of com- combine that uh, because uh, the all new Captain America is making his appearance in two books. This and also Captain America and Mighty Avengers number one. Right. So in this one, this is an Axis tie-in. So Cap, so Sam Wilson's now the new Captain America. He has to grab up the Mighty Avengers and go on their first mission. And what is that first mission entail? You're gonna have to find out because this is also dealing with Axis as well. If, I think it's actually following. I don't know. I don't. You know, I'm I, not sure where the story goes. You know, you know, I like some of these Marvel events, but with these tie-in books, you never know. Just read it and then guess where it falls in for the story. Either way, it's it's fun. That's right. I see. I haven't said fun in a long time. You haven't? No. So if you want to check out the all-new Captain America. And the Captain America and the Mighty Avengers. Right. Uh, this, these are his first solo books, and he's actually running a team now. I thought he did a good job. Uh, he was running a team in Axis. He was handling the business. So most likely this book is supposed to come out before Axis. Possibly. Possibly. Yeah. Check it out. Well, <laughs> your guess is as good as ours. <laughs> Number three coming up. So coming in at number three is Thor number two. Is this actually is it called all new Thor? No, it's actually just Thor. Okay. No, uh, it's also not called uh, girl Thor or anything like that. It's just Thor or not, woman Thor because you know she's yes, grown. Right. Sorry. But this is Thor number two. This is we finally see the new Thor right. in not, action. It's not Thor turning into a woman. It's just okay. a new Thor. It's it's not it's not Thor just beca- it's it's someone else. Wielding Mjolnir and becoming meow meow, meow meow, and, beca- <laughs> and picking up the title of Thor, 
Thor himself is still there, but this is great. And, um, you know, the, the, this number one already ish, but you don't, at the very end, like the last page, shows uh, a woman holding the, the hammer, fully decked out in armor, but you have no idea who it is. I have a pretty good guess of who it is from the book, but I think it's, I think it's too easy. Like, they're like, how hey, we want to make you think this is who it is, and then it ends up yep. not being, but... So in Thor number two, we found uh, apparently an army of frost giants are invading Earth. So this is going to be Thor's first time in action. So pick up the issue to figure out yeah, how she does. In Thor number one, they kind of start to attack, and it's not pretty. Oh, it's not? No. Something happens with Thor. It's pretty bad. Which Thor? The, the guy Thor. Oh, that's a shame. Yeah. So coming in at number two, Superior Iron Man number one. Now, this is taken directly, like every other thing, directly out of Axis. Yeah, this right. is the Axis effect has hit Tony Stark. And this isn't the Tony Stark that we all know and love. This He has gone back to his old habits. And now he has an Iron Man suit to begin with. Wait, what? Well, it's, it's essentially uh, like he's, he's given out extremists. Extremists? Extreme? I never say it. And for the public, like, a public version of it for them to use in their day-to-day. But it also does things that people don't know it does. Sort of like how people are blind to the fact that, you know, if you if you carry around, you know, a smartphone, then your, your life could be looked at right away. It's almost like the same thing. You know, it's, it's like, here, I can watch crime while everybody enjoys my new product. And so it, it, it's, it's definitely... I have a feeling that people are going to side with him on this. I don't think he's going to be portrayed as a necessarily villain. Oh, people. you'd be mistaken oh, because no. because apparently oh, that's right. Daredevil oh. is not happy with he this. Says, no, no. I'm nope. a liberal. No, just, <laughs> just, just kidding. Just kidding. Don't cut the end. They'll be going to beat me. <laughs> don't beat me. No, I'm just, when you just be a, kidding. Here, when, here, wouldn't you be a conservative, though? I don't even know. I don't know. But yeah. Here, but anyway, here at <laughs> Punk Monkey Comics and Nerds of the Apocalypse, we do not take any, we do not publicly say any political side, or if you want to say any hate mail to Stevie B, yes. it's at, at Stevie B. It's a good good episode <laughs> for me. <laughs> so the Man Without Fear apparently does not like the direction that Tony Stark is going with. So the Man Without Fear is going to try and stop Tony from doing whatever he whatever. Dastardly things he's actually going to do. <laughs> the dastardly deeds of super. Although the the title Superior Iron Man, it, it just it kind of it kind of gets to me. I, I don't get me wrong. I want to read this book. It looks good, but it's like it's it's all new X Men comes out, and it does really well and it's really good. It's like we got to put all new on everything because that's what makes it good. No, that's not what made it good. Superior Spider Man. It was so good. It we got to put Superior on it. It's like stop it. Okay, Superior Carnage wasn't that bad. You're, yeah, you're right. Um, so, I'm, but the reason that we're really interested in Superior Iron Man is because our actually it's my favorite writer. It's definitely mine. Tom Taylor from uh, he is the writer for Injustice based on the video game. If you're and not reading Earth Injustice, 2. you got to you got to check it out. It's good. Please, you got to check. It. Oh, it's so good. You can get like the I think the here Punk Rock Comics. If they don't have the first trade, they can get it for you. So that's right. Uh, it's in the if you play the Injustice game, it's set before the games start. So it's how Superman goes the way he goes. So <laughs> that's right. So Superior Iron Man number one, definitely check it out and yeah, just check it out. It's fun. <laughs> okay, number one book of the week is Spider Verse issue one. It's a little different because Spider Verse part one. Was in this last issue of Amazing Spider-Man. Number not, nine. Number nine. Spider-Verse is, is telling the stories of all these different Spider-Men. And you're like, well, I, I can blow them up. The problem with these stories are that they're really good. Like, and so you want you want to read them. It's all these different tales of Spider-Man. I miss Spider-Kitty already. Do you? Yeah. Yeah. Meow. Mm. <laughs> so, uh, with Spider-Verse number one, I'm actually going to have to read this off the paper because it's this... Big names... Doing some nice stuff. That's right. Uh, we dealt, uh, dive deep into the Spire Verse mm-hmm. event with most Spire Field anthology ever. So we already have the Amazing Spider Man team of Dan Slott and Humberto Ramos. Uh, if, Ramos, I'm sorry. Uh, if you don't know, yeah, Dan Slott is the one who writes Amazing Spider Man right now. So Yeah. Uh, they kick it off with their story, and then they have Scotty Young. Rocket Raccoon. He does all the all the baby variants that Marvel puts out that are, that are in 
Chuck's right. the word. So cute. It's so cute. They're adorable. <laughs> They're, uh, adorable. And he, he actually draws and writes Racket Raccoon. Yes, he does. Which is hitting on all cylinders right now. So. All right. So him and Jake Parker from All New X-Men tell a Mangaverse spider story. Uh, Robbie Thompson, who is a writer from Supernatural. Ooh. It's a good show. Except after season five, it should have When the ended. show ended, it should have ended. It should have ended. Right. Uh, and uh, him and Dennis Midri uh, introduced a steampunk spider woman. And then uh, Katie Cook, a Marvel, the Marvel animal variants, uh, it, introduces a new spider character. You know, the animal variants, you know she draws My Little Pony. The co- yeah, oh, boom! No, and I know what you're saying. My Little Pony... I, you know, friendship I, is magic. I get them for my daughter. I know what you're gonna say, Stevie B. You read them too. Yeah, whatever. Say, say it. Whatever. It, they are definitely drawn incredibly well. Yeah, I I've, I've I get her. them for for his daughter too. <laughs> Stop it. I met her at Heroes Con, and she's really sweet. She's nuts. So check it out. That's right. Spire verse number one. You're gonna get a whole bunch of uh, Spire stories. And if you're not reading Spider Verse, get on it. I can't can't tell you how good Spider-Verse has been so far. We just read The Edge of Spider-Verse and the and part 1 of Spider-Verse was really good and also very creepy. It's very bone chilling. Yes. <clears throat> but oh. <laughs> I did it. Gross. I right, think if you're joining us Monkey Apocalypse no Jeff but you got Steven Trex and that's that's perfectly fine. Uh, we, we we got some more details coming up, but just a little sneak preview. Dan said, give him a little sneak, a little, give him a little taste, and then take it away so they have a little something to go by. Uh, we got, there's a Sanford Green signing coming up, and there's going to be a big Black Friday sale at Punk Monkey Comics. Uh, details to follow. It's definitely not because there are no details yet. That's definitely not the reason. It's, it's just a tease, we promise. Uh, so, there we go, and... We hope you enjoyed our what? Oh, I, I got your judging eyes. No, you're not. Th- these are not judging eyes. <laughs> okay, all right. I'm letting you do your thing. <laughs> oh, thank you, sir. I appreciate <laughs> it. Uh, so, so thank you for joining us today. Uh, short but sweet. We're getting over books. Lots of number ones. This, this, this should be. This what's what's the number for today? Number twenty-eight. Twenty-eight point one. I'm not putting that. Oh come on! All right. <laughs> this is Monkey Apocalypse, and we are out. <laughs>